Welcome to Maker Theory. On this episode, I'll be showing how to make a 3D printed fixture to consistently laser mark on a minimalist wallet. All right, we're going to jump into Fusion 360 here. And I'm going to start with a sketch. I'm just go on this uh, front plane here. And we'll get a, I'm going to go with a uh, rectangle. I'm going to go off center. A center rectangle here. Just click and drag that out. Now I'm going to go back and dimension it. So I'm going to get dimensions off the actual wallet here. So I'll start with my width. Got 54 millimeters. Oh, looks like I'm in inches, so I'll go ahead and just 54. I'm going to add two tenths of a millimeter on there to uh, add a little bit of clearance. That way parts slip in and out pretty easily. Uh, since I'm still in inches right now, I'll go ahead and type in millimeters. That will throw the right dimension in there. Before I continue, I'm going to go to my document settings. We're going to change this to millimeters since I know these wallets are in millimeters and that'll make things a little bit easier. So I'll go ahead and click on this dimension and using my calipers here, got 86 millimeters. I'll go ahead and add a little extra again. Now I don't have to type in millimeters because I'm already in millimeters for my base units on this uh, document. So that'll work good. Now this will be the clearance that the wall it's going to sit in. Now to make the outside walls, I'm going to use the offset command here. I'll grab that and I'm going to offset it two millimeters. Doesn't need to be anything heavy. We're not putting any uh, side load on it. It's just a, basically a stop. Okay. And then I don't want to hold the wallet on all four sides. It'll make it difficult to get in and out of this uh, little fixture. So what I'm going to do is draw a couple lines here and extend this. here and here, and that'll be it for this sketch. So now we will finish the sketch. Now I can go to extrude. So I'm going to select this perimeter here. So it'll give me my three walls. And let's go to the height of these wallets. So again, we'll go back, measure a wallet here. I'm getting just under seven millimeters. So we can do that. So now we've got a three-sided uh, shape here. So next, what I'm going to do is go around to the back side and I'm going to select this face on this bottom edge. Zoom in a little. There we go. I'm going to do another sketch. This time, because we've got that bottom open, I'm going to go ahead and create a rectangle based on my corners here. It's going to lock it to those corners. So if I change this outside wall dimension, say I want to go to a thicker wall, this base should follow that as well. Now what I do want to do, uh, add as provision for the clip, because the clip hangs down low. Add another rectangle in here. Escape. I'm going to trim these two. So now I've got my rectangle here. And I'm going to set these two to equal. 
because the clip on mine is symmetric. And it's going to measure the width of this clip. So I'm seeing 42 or 41 millimeters. I'm going to get a little extra clearance. Again, we're not aligning off this clip, so we don't need to hug that clip. You get too many things where it's trying to align, and if some one thing's out of alignment compared to the others, now you're going to have an issue um, with one thing fighting the other. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to give an extra millimeter clearance. And then for our height, I'm measuring 30 from this top edge down to here. Again, I want it to locate off of the perimeter of the wallet because that's where I'm going to be marking. So I'm actually going to reduce that so make sure there's extra clearance from that clip. So we'll do 20. So we'll do 28 millimeters there. So I give us a little bit extra room for the clip to sit in there without touching this back wall. So that looks pretty good. Go ahead and finish that sketch. Again, we'll go to extrude and I'll have to click both of these because it's got that inner line for the wall, which I didn't draw, but it infers it because it's on that same plane. So I have to click both of those regions in order for it to, uh, to extrude both of them. And then for the height of this clip, I'm probably going to go overboard on this, but I'll go ahead and measure the height here. This is five, uh, just about five and a half millimeters at the peak. I'm going to go ahead and give that some extra. So I'll go ahead and move this up. Let's go uh, do seven millimeters for that. We don't want to taper on here. And notice this operation says join. So I could do, if I do join, these two bodies are now going to be as one piece. Uh, if I did a cut, it'd be going the other direction and cut it out. Um, a few other options we can cover those later. New body or new component would be um, something that's not attached to this. Because we want to print this as one piece, we want to make sure that it says join. So go ahead and accept that. Now this would work, but I want to add a mounting hole. More importantly, I want to add two mounting holes so that way when I mount it to my bed on my laser. It has two locations that not only lock it into a position, but also lock the rotation into it. So that way it's always vertical. So I'm going to have to add another layer to this base. Again, I'll select this backside. I'll sketch. This time I'm going to be doing a Full rectangle, nothing fancy. That's it for this one. Again, we'll do an extrude. We'll grab both of these profiles here or regions. And we'll extend this down. I will have to check the height of the screws that I have, but I believe eight millimeters should be sufficient. So there's that. Now, before we start doing the holes, there are some other provisions I want to put in. There's an elastic band that sticks out on the edges here, and I want to make sure that these elastic bands 
are not interfering with this fixture at all because they stick out past the, the edge and they're a fabric. So they're going to be flexible. They're going to be um, not reliable to gauge off of. So I'm going to do another sketch here on this top. This is going to be pretty simple. Just going to do a couple of rectangles like that. And then we'll go ahead and dimension them. So this one on this top edge, I'm getting about 29 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and round it to 30 again just for clearance. It is centered. Is select this edge, select this edge by holding control and selecting those both and use midpoint here. And it should snap to the center like that. You'll see the triangle indicating that there's a midpoint locking that in place. And then I will do a dimension on this one. This one's 19, so I'm going to go ahead and do 21. Now it's not, don't know that's actually centered on this guy. So I'm going to measure off the top edge. down. So I've got about 34 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and back that off to 33 from this edge to here. So now I've got those two. Finish the sketch. I'll we'll do an extrude, and this is where I'll select these two regions because I want to cut. I'm going to go ahead and drag this down and see now this operation switches to cut. And for the extend type, I don't want to do a distance. I want to go to an object, so I'm going to tell it to go to that face, and that should that should take care of that. So now the last step is to actually put the holes in here for our screws. Okay, so now we're on to our last step here. So quick and easy. Let's go to this back side here. I'll draw two lines, one line segment here. Like so. Grab that line, grab the origin, and we'll hit midpoint. So that I'll snap it to the middle, and I'll make our, our uh, holes evenly spaced and be dead center on this fixture. I know my grid on my laser is 50 millimeter spacing. So we'll do that. And we'll add a couple holes here. So I've got a six millimeter grid. I'm gonna select both of those, hold control and click each one and then hit equals. So now I've got two equal circles. You can change this to a construction line just so it doesn't show up with my sketch. And there we go. So I'll grab these two Again, I'll drag them this way, and I want them to go all the way through. So I'm going to say all, make sure it's uncut, and hit OK. There's those. And then for hiding the head of the screw so it doesn't hit the actual wallet, I'll do is go back here 
do this face again sketch. And since I've already got two whole circles there, I'm just going to go ahead and draw two new ones. Select each one. Again, make them equal. Dimension it. Head of the screws that I have are rather large. Um, so I'm going to do a 13 millimeter hole for those. And then I'm going to go and finish this sketch. I'm going to select these two. Now, if I rotate here, we'll see I can go ahead and cut, but I don't want to cut through everything. Actually, I don't want to cut through this bottom. I want a little bit of a step there. So my start, instead of being profile plane, I'm going to do an offset and I'm going to offset it. I want two millimeters for uh, material underneath the head of the screw. So this is actually going the wrong way. So I will change that to a negative two millimeters. So that should leave a gap there. We're going to cut out the rest. In case we make any changes, I'm going to go ahead and say all. So it'll be linked to whatever the, the end face is. It's still on cut, which we can tell because it's red. I'm going to hit OK. And now I've got a counterboard hole. Now that we have this model completed, we can go ahead and export it so we can 3D print it. And export. Now for file type, I use a 3MF because uh, for fixturing it breaks everything into individual components. Otherwise you could use an STL if you want it to print in place. So I'll go into Cura, we'll go ahead and open our file, bring it in. And here it is. So we can drag in the arrows and move it over if you're not familiar with Cura. Or we can just go into the coordinates here, type in 000, and that'll drop center of our build plate, depending on how you have your printer set up. I'm already in the configuration I want, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit slice, and it looks like we're gonna be about an hour and nine minutes. Do a preview, make sure everything looks how I expect it. And we're gonna be uh, good to go. So we'll print it and see how it turns out. So here's a fixture after I've printed it. I went ahead and dropped the screws in and you can see the screws sit nice and uh, below the, uh, the level there. We can take and drop the wallet in and it fits nice flush with the top, sits flat on the bottom. We don't have any interference with the clip. So that's pretty nice. And now we can take the wallet out and we'll go ahead and mount it to the table here. The screws I have for this fixture are a little bit long so I'll go ahead and speed this up to spare you some time. But once it's mounted we have a nice consistent place to uh, put our wallet and we get consistent marking between multiple uh, copies. Good for production. If the traditional like and subscribe isn't enough for you, feel free to follow the links in the description below to find out how you can reach out to me, learn more, as well as find out how to support the channel through my website, products, as well as Patreon. I greatly appreciate the support and look forward to making more videos in the future.